So hello everyone, my name is Alexandre Scheck. I'm the CEO and inventor of the Enovap company. I know we talked a bit about innovation. I'd like uh, to show you a new innovation today. It's not about heat not burn, it's not about a new dual size device. It's about disruptive innovation, it's about Enovap. Enovap is the first uh, smart personal vaporizer that is going to enable users to control their personal nicotine intake. Uh, please give me a few seconds before the, the slides arrive on the screen. Uh, but just a few words about how uh, this started. So I started this company when I was a student, graduating from my engineering degree. And basically, I had the chance to work on a personal project. At the time, I was a smoker. I smoked one pack of cigarettes every day, even more during the weekend. So I started to vape. I bought the first e-cigarette with a dosage of 6 milligrams. And then I realized I needed more nicotine sometimes, so I bought another device with 18 milligrams this time. And I was just switching from one or the other based on my needs during the day. You know, after, after a full night of sleep, your, your body needs nicotine. So maybe there is a, a way to, to put a device on the market to adjust this nicotine. And that's how I discovered we had, I mean, I had different nicotine needs throughout the day. So I decided to push a bit, uh, a bit further this uh, concept, this hypothesis. So I did a study in my school uh, on 100 smokers, and that's where I realized that there were so many different throat hits for all the different type of users, and that a single throat hit is not the right solution for a single user. That's the big issue I think we have in the industry today. We have only one tank. We cannot adjust the nicotine. The only thing we can adjust is the amount of vapor. So I built this company uh, as I was a student with uh, the six guys you can see, uh, boys and girls you can see on the picture. I think they were crazy enough to follow my, uh, my passion and my vision a couple years ago. But now we're ready after three and a half years of R&D. We launched our product on the market in January. And I'm really happy to have all these guys uh, supporting me in this team. Of course, we are uh, surrounded by uh, uh, advisor, advisors from the health community. So Professor Dotzenberg helped us shape this first study in, the, in my school. Then I'm now working with Anne Born on more uh, a one-year study to evaluate the real smoking cessation rate of Enovap on 100 smokers. Uh, Marie Bejo has also really understood the real, uh, the opportunity with the Enovap patent to actually not only dose nicotine, but to dose any active substance. I'll talk about it a bit later. And to finish Mediami, which is a lecturer, uh, associate professor at CNRS, the French National Research Center, that is advising us on the strategy around data, because we do collect data on this device. So our mission is to enable users, as I said, to control their nicotine consumption. The real fact here we have, the opportunity, is that more than half of vapors still smoke cigarettes. Nobody is addressing this issue. So on the one side, we have, I think this is caused by a, a, simple, uh, a simple fact. On the market, we have the third generation device, as a, uh, my colleague from PMI was saying, not my colleague, but the, the person from PMI was saying, are quite big, not very uh, fancy. And on the other side, we have all the big tobacco products, the dual size device that have maximum in Europe 20 milligrams of nicotine and cannot really help in terms of nicotine delivery a smoker. And we don't have any device in the middle or solution to address this. So that's why we developed the first personal vaporizer to adjust nicotine at each puff in order to make a better transition from tobacco to vaping. So the first innovation we've built is a hardware innovation. It's all around having a double pot system. Remember these two vapes I had? That's what we have here. We have two vapes in one with a chipset, uh, electronics that are able to manage simultaneously the evaporation, evaporization of each tank at the same time. So how does it work? You're basically going to put two different nicotine levels. You can, for example, put as the pods are refillable, you can put zero milligram on the left pod and 18 milligram on the right pod. Then you're gonna be able to adjust any nicotine level of your choice between this range. Isn't it great? On the morning, 12, uh, six milligram, after lunch, 12 milligram, maybe with a glass of whiskey, 18 milligram, and you don't smoke the last cigarettes. That's the solution, I think. Uh, I believe that's the solution for vaping in the future. On top of this hardware innovation, we've built another layer of technology. The device is connected in Bluetooth, and every puff is recording on the smartphone. This basically will help the user better understand his consumption. 
in terms of number of puffs per day, per week, per month, even the nicotine concentration per day, week, or month. And at the end, he will have a weekly summary with basically his nicotine quantity per day. That's really innovative. Uh, of course, it's interesting to have data because with this data and with the user uh, data collection, we're going to be able to push uh, notification to the user based on their consumption, based on their patterns. If they reach a certain level, they're going to get a notification from tobacco cessation specialists. Um, but it's, it's nice to have data collection, but what do we do about all this data? We see a lot of connected objects. What do we do about the data? Well, we found a solution with Anovap. We have built a real artificial intelligence with the French National Research Center. It's a basically an automatic step-down program. How does it work? So remember, we, have, we know exactly how much nicotine each user needs for each day at each time, right? So now, let's say we put an automatic step-down program that will replicate the user's past consumption based on his patterns, based on his needs, still at the same time decreasing gradually without the user noticing it because we're keeping the range and the peaks the, the user needs, and gradually win him off nicotine. I mean, that's a, a need. We, we, we're answering a need on the market. People are trying to decrease their nicotine. The thing is they are doing it too fast. They go from 12 to 6, and then what do they do? They double their number of vapes per day, or they just get back to cigarettes. There is a need for a device to adjust manually and potentially to help users um, get the, a tool to get them out of nicotine, if this is their wish. Of course, it is optional. It's an optional program. It's not uh, mandatory. And at any time, the user can get back in manual mode to get the right nicotine. And the great thing is that the device will learn from it. It will auto-adjust, auto-adapt to learn and become smarter. So the more you use it, the smarter it gets. Now, a little bit about the IP. I think it's, I'd like to, uh, to talk to you about the, the IP we own at Enovap. It's not only about nicotine. So I've showed you the application about nicotine today, but the device is for the adjustment of any active substance through the inhalation route using a double pot system. Uh, imagine in the future we can dose other active substances, maybe CBD, why not CBD and THC in the US, CBD and nicotine, uh, or even on a longer, longer uh, development, we could think about delivering drugs for personalized medicine in the right quantity we need it, with, for example, authorizations that could be uh, granted from the doctor uh, and deliver some, a certain number of puffs over a certain active substance. That's where I want to bring Enovap. That's what the IP of Enovap is capable of, and the first innovation we've done is about nicotine. <coughs> I'd like to read that uh, at this feedback, basically, this is a, a feedback we received uh, uh, from a customer a couple of weeks ago from Sarah in the UK. And when I see this comment, I almost cried when I saw it. It's the reason why I built Enovap. And she said a few weeks ago, with the Enovap, I went from 50 cigarettes a day to none in a week. This has literally saved my life. And I think it's really helping real smokers, not the smokers that f smoke five cigarettes, even though they are still at risk, I guess the real smokers, the ones that need help, is the heavy smokers. That's a technology, that's a device that can help them. We've launched the product four months ago. Uh, that's a few reviews, a few uh, feedback about what the community, the, uh, the industrials talk about us. So distributors, wholesalers, uh, magazines. Um, I think it's what obvious. It's, Phil Bussard has been saying it's a truly a unique uh, technology, brilliant. Uh, the only truly innovative product on the market from Vaporon magazine. It's going to be a revolution from vapeempire.co. So, I mean, I think everybody understands here what we have in between our hands. It's a real innovation, a disruptive innovation. No one has been doing this in the industry. And I still don't understand why nobody's focusing on the users. It's about the users to quit tobacco. A little study we did uh, in Paris with Professor Dutzenberg to show the potential efficacy of the device. This was a couple years ago. Uh, it was not just an observational study on four during a week in four hospitals on 61 smokers. And what we did, basically, we put an Enovap in the hands of users and compared their behavior compared to a single, uh, uh, I mean, a normal device with one tank with six milligram nicotine, which is the nicotine you basically get in shops most of the time. And what we noticed is that there is an increase of roughly around 35% in the desire to quit smoking for the user with the Enovap. 
because they, has this, they had this possibility to adjust their heat to meet their needs when they wanted. So we also uh, did the beta test on 500 users in order to uh, better understand, evaluate the device functionalities and also start gathering data. At this date, we have more than uh, 2,500,000 puffs recorded on our servers. Don't worry, they are hosted on data health servers protected by the French government. Um, and we're learning from the consumers, we're learning about their behavior, how much nicotine they use when they start, what flavors they could be using, uh, and that is really very important information for a, for a company to better understand the markets, understand the trends. Uh, it's good to know for a certain category of vapors, of people, what, are the, what is the behavior? What are they trying to quit? Are they willing to quit in a week, in a month? All these data, we're gathering it with the NAVAP. And of course, on the longer term, in the future, we'd like to make, uh, as I said before, a longer study, a one-year study, on 100 uh, users, uh, we're partnering with the uh, Hospital Nord 92, which is a French network of hospitals, and the INSERM, uh, in order to evaluate the percentage of smoking cessation uh, using the ENOVAP. And to finish on these slides, just to show you where, where we came from, I started as a student. Uh, I mean, engineering student, I'm not, uh, I don't have expertise in building my company, nor doing a business plan, nor doing sales. But still, we went uh, through, uh, I think, hard work, and now we're happy. Uh, it all started with a gold medal at the Concours Lépine, which is the French uh, national competition for innovation. And then after we got the support from the, the French Minister of uh, Education and uh, Innovation in France, we were publicly, publicly funded uh, by the, the, um, the French government. We were also best connected object by the French Minister of Health. Uh, and of course, uh, we got the seal of excellence by the European Commission. Uh, and recently, uh, when we started doing these vape shows, vape conventions, we were really pleased to get the innovation of the year at the Vapor Expo and outstanding contribution to the vape industry. Thank you very much for your time. Please don't hesitate to come and talk to me. We have a, a little poster during the, in the networking area. I'd be really happy to share with you my views and discuss about any possible opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alex. You've been very busy since we last met. Um, questions, questions? Hi, I'm Zed, French tobacconist, again. And uh, I, I've been using and selling the Innovap for a few months now. And uh, it has been a very, very, very great product, but it has one limitation, like, I was only be able to, s a customer would tell me that uh, the draw would be too large. There's no MTL draw in it. So are you planning on doing something about that or not? Yes, we are. Um, indeed, the pods we're using are 0.6 ohm pods with more direct lung experience. That's the first version that was ready, to be honest. We were not able to put on the market two versions at the same time. But of course, we're addressing the smokers. We're addressing the MTL experience, the mouse tooling experience. So we are currently engineering a pod system that has a tighter draw, similar to, to a real MTL, in order to address this uh, category of user. And we're gonna be proposing this both experience. One more discrete MTL experience with a tight draw for specialized for smokers. And the other, which is the more direct lung experience that after some wide smokers can get to, I mean, smokers that became vapors, and more largely, <coughs> sorry, uh, advanced vapors that will also be able to use the device to dose the nicotine. Or mix flavors, by the way, if they want to do it, because it's also possible to mix flavors, but it's secondary. Can I ask you a question, Alex? Yes. Um, is it fair to describe this as, uh, the Enovap as quite a specialist um, niche uh, product? I can well see the, um, the attractions to it. Are you able to tell us anything about how your sales have gone since you launched? Um, and are the users, what, what, uh, are they early vapors? Are they experienced vapors? Are they things, and I'm sorry, a third limb is, the challenge is in a, in, a, in a very innovative, exciting product like this in the current French mm. European regulatory climate. So I, at start, I, would, I thought my device was going to be a real niche product, only for uh, advanced vapors or very tech passionate people, smokers. 
What I realized after four months, uh, we're already present in 400 point of sale, mainly in France, a bit in the UK, Germany, expanding in, in the rest of Europe. And it's not a mass market product yet, but it's not nor uh, a niche product neither. It's a product that is for a lot of my clients, the clients we have to, to, to today, we have cigar, people that smoke cigars, people that smoke cigarius, people that uh, never vaped before. Uh, people that have been vaping for three years, not able to find a device that suits them. People that were vaping on uh, hot vapor and it was too hot so they couldn't use any device on the market. Now they have a cold vapor system which they prefer. So I realized it's a device that is addressed to the dual users. It's more than 50% of the consumer we have on the market. It's the people that still smoke. Half of them still smoke. And regarding the, the launch, so yeah, I was really surprised to see it's, a, it's not only a French innovation, it's not only a European innovation, it's a worldwide innovation. Everybody, we're getting a lot of interest from a lot of people saying they're crazy about what it is. When they try it, when they use it, they cannot believe what it does. And um, so yeah, we, we're really happy with the launch, uh, trying to, uh, to do all our European tour and uh, with this very busy period, but uh, I'm really happy with all what's happening currently with Innovap. Congratulations. Hello. Harry Lewis from Germany. Great innovation. Um, I just have one question. How do your consumers react to the fact that you make them completely transparent in, in their behavior and you record the smoking behavior of each consumer? Especially in Germany, the data protection is a big issue. Yeah. And what is the feedback that you receive? First, they have a choice not letting us gathering the data. If they decide to use the app to track data, of course, uh, they sign up, like when you sign up for Facebook, you sign up for all the terms and conditions. It's basically the same. You allow us to use the data for analytic purpose. Um, and it's also necessary for us to have this data to make the auto mode, the autopilot mode. How can we make it if we don't have the data? So yeah, we need it. And once again, it is stored. Uh, we are RGPD compliant. It is stored in... Uh, uh, data health data centers that are protected by the government. Basically, any breach on this uh, database is recorded and can be uh, followed. And how many are using the app? I mean, you have numbers of people that yeah. buy the product. So and then roughly, how many? we've distributed, uh, we've sold roughly 4,000 products uh, to distributor shops. So not all in the hands of the users. I assume 2,000 users have uh, a device between their hands. And we have a little more than 1,000 users using the app every day. I'm crazily surprised about this data. I would expect only 10, 20% of users as for all the connected objects. It looks it's 50% for now, for now. Um, can I see any other questions? No. Well, thank you very much, Alex. That was uh, very, uh, very, very interesting.